Exodus chapter 12, verse number 12. We'll read three verses of scripture. Exodus chapter 12, verse number 12. Amen. Don't you love our worship team? Praise God. Amen. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, not just the Egyptians, but all the firstborn that's in the land both man and beast. I'm going to kill everything that came out of the womb first. It doesn't matter what the family heritage is. It doesn't matter what structure of home you dwell in. If you're in a tent, but I'm going to smite, the Lord said, firstborn in the land and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment and so we miss that sometimes God not only killed the firstborn in the land but he attacked all the false gods in Egypt then he makes this statement I am the Lord. I am the sovereign God. I can do this thing. No questions asked. No answers given. No explanations are needed. I am God. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. There will be a plague, but the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. You will experience the plague. Your house will be enveloped and surrounded by the plague but you won't be destroyed by it. When I smite the land of Egypt, in verse number 14, and this day shall be unto you for, everybody say, a memorial. This day shall be unto you for a memorial, the Bible says, and then the Lord instructed them to keep a feast. I want to preach to you on this subject. Souvenirs from sovereignty. Souvenirs from sovereignty. Won't you clap your hands unto the Lord from whence cometh your help. My help cometh from the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Souvenirs from sovereignty. The word souvenir, you would humor me, is a thing that's kept as a reminder of a place or an event. Some words that describe and that are synonymous with the term souvenir are these. Memento, keepsake, reminder, 
testimonial, memorial, or even a trophy. And so, again, as you, as we go along in this uh, message and thought and theme, just bear in mind that a souvenir is a keepsake. It is meant to be a reminder of a place or an event. It is a memorial. God instructed the people of Israel that that day would be unto them a memorial, a souvenir, a keepsake, something to be reminded of. It was an event. It was a reminder of a place. And the word sovereignty is a supreme or the supreme power or authority. It's a self-governing one. It's someone or something that is free from external control. And so when we talk about sovereignty or the sovereignty of God, we're talking about his supreme power and his supreme authority. He is the only self-existing one. He is the really, truly only self-governing one. He's the only one that's freed from all external control and power. And so this God that created the heavens and the earth, uh, this God that every man, every human will one day have to answer to, amen, you don't have to answer to him right now or today or even in your entire lifespan, but one day you will have to answer to the Supreme One. And so when we speak of sovereignty, we're speaking of God in that manner. And so I want to communicate to you the thought and concept of souvenirs, mementos, keepsakes, testimonials, and memorials, that's what a souvenir is, that you and I get from the sovereign one. Now, can I just talk to you a little bit about souvenirs? I don't know how I got this thought. Uh, this thought process, uh, and uh, what I do know, I, one, actually, I, I'll blame it on my wife. She went to a conference, and uh, I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning, just <laughs> the Lord and I, and uh, some thoughts came across my, my mind as I began to meditate and pray and talk, and, and, uh, and so here we are. And so we, my wife and I, we, we, we just took a, a, uh, a trip. We covered, including Maryland, 10 states in 11 days. And uh, our normal, normal routine when we go on trips is to stop somewhere and get a memento, get a keepsake, get a souvenir. And we'll stop in a shop or something along the way and pick up a, a souvenir to take home to say, we've been there, we've done that. Well, for this trip, my wife said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Amen. We didn't get any. We went into the, the sweatshirt and T-shirt shops, and we went into souvenir shops, and, oh, let's go in here, she said. I said, okay, we're going to buy a T-shirt. No, I just want to look. I'm not much of a window shopper. But normally, typically, we will purchase a souvenir because it shows that we have been to a particular place. It, we like to display our souvenirs on our uh, uh, refrigerator, but she, maybe that's why she doesn't want to. Uh, she didn't want to get any uh, souvenirs. We cleared off all the souvenirs from the uh, all the magnets, and so we used to have on our refrigerator magnets from all over the place. <laughs> Places that we've been, places I've traveled to, and, and all that. I don't wear my magnets anyway. <laughs> I want my magnets to show where I've been. 
Amen. And we, we like to collect, amen, souvenirs. How many of you, you've been somewhere, you've done something, and you have a souvenir to talk about it? Maybe a, it's a bumper sticker or a T-shirt. I don't know. Amen. But I, I, I like that. Well, some of you ra didn't raise your hand. Maybe you hadn't been anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> you got to get out a little, little more. <laughs> but, um, and so while we, we like to collect the, the, these, these souvenirs as, as gifts uh, and, uh, and to say, hey, we, we've traveled to this particular place and we've experienced this thing. And, and so a lot of times uh, if I've experienced something new, amen, I want to talk about it, amen, I want to tell, tell you all about it or send you pictures. Some of you got some of my pictures that, that I sent or my wife's pictures uh, that, she had, that, that she took or whatever to say, hey, we, we had a good time. We've, we're experiencing these things. It's, it's wonderful. And so a lot of people like to talk about places they've been to, that they've traveled to. And, and, um, and so whenever you go on vacation, amen, we like to brag about our vacation, amen? Amen, at least if it's a good vacation. Now, sometimes, now just, I'm, I'm going to get to what I'm getting to. Sometimes, uh, someone in your family may go on a trip, and they decide to pick up a souvenir for you. Or some of you will say, hey, don't forget to give me a souvenir, bring me something back. Now, the fact of the matter is you just want something. You, you, know, you don't really care about the place. I mean, it's not like you've been there. Hey, Amen. You just want a new T-shirt. Just, buy, just make sure you go into the ocean, bring me some salt water taffy back. Amen. And so it's, it's a little different when someone else had an experience somewhere or been to a particular place, they had a good time there. Maybe it's the Caribbean, maybe it's Jamaica. Amen. I don't know about Trinidad. <laughs> maybe Trinidad. And, and uh, they've been there, and they, they come back to tell about it, and, but they, get, they, they gave you something. You say, okay, uh, thank you very much. And so maybe you'll put that, uh, that magnet on your refrigerator. Maybe not. But it's not the same. Someone giving you something to represent an experience you didn't have is not the same as you having that particular experience and you bringing back the T-shirt or the bumper sticker that says, yes, I've been there and I have done that. And so God understands that it's not the same for you to talk about somebody else's experience and for you to talk about somebody else's memorial, a memento, and God is designed to give you an experience on your own so you can say yes I've been there and I have done that I've got the t-shirt I've got the bumper sticker I have the magnet on my refrigerator I have experienced this thing even when we've been somewhere and all the experiences wasn't so pleasant. We still talk about it. Amen. I've been to places and I, I shared my experiences. You know how it is. You've been somewhere, you've done something, and, and you had some unpleasant situations. But you still come back to talk about it. And so you will talk about all your unpleasant. Yes, I went there and got my hotel and they didn't have a room ready or I had some old raggedy room with the carpets all torn up. The, 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 um, this is a real life story. <laughs> my wife and I, we've been to places or whatever and we check in one room and, and within hours my, my wife just got there and everything. I'm, we, we're not staying in this room. 
We're checking out of here. She got everything all unpacked, every, everything unwound, wound, everything unpacked and wound, and she's ready to relax and all that. Somebody's above us making all sorts of noise. And I know when I stand here. Call the people, hey, give me another room. And we share those experiences with others. That's just the way we do it. You see, God is not going to leave you and I out on having an experience with him. Can I say that some experiences aren't as pleasant as others? The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter number 5, and our media people will be with me on this. It will be one with me. <laughs> Romans chapter 5 and verse number 3 and 4. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And uh, patience experience and experience hope. The scripture here starts off with the concept and idea of faith. It lets us know that we have grace available in verse number one, available to us through faith. Uh, it tells us also that we are justified by faith uh, and that we have peace with God through Jesus Christ or our faith in Jesus Christ. And, and so as I've mentioned before, faith gains us access and justification, or should I say righteousness and innocence. Uh, faith also grants us access, amen, and to peace. Uh, and who doesn't need that? And it goes on to say in verse number two uh, that faith also gets us access into this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Verse number three goes on and says, and not only all that, not only do I have access to God's peace, and not only am I righteous because of God's faith, uh, not, only be, not only that, and, and I rejoice in the glory of hope, uh, but I also glory. I also, that word glory means to boast. I also brag. I also boast. I also talk about. I also tell everybody. You see, I have had uh, some experience, uh, and I'm going to tell somebody. Uh, now, all of my experiences are not always good things. Hey, every testimony is not bragging on every good thing that's gone. Oh, hallelujah. But sometimes your testimony is the tribulation that you've just gone through. Sometimes your testimony is talking about the difficult times that you just faced. Somebody need to learn how to praise God and give God glory in the junk, in the mess, in the problems, in the difficulties, in the pressure, and the distresses. Oh, hallelujah. So Paul said, I not only glory in all that, but I boast in my tribulations. I, I boast in my pressures and my troubles and my difficulties also because I know that tribulation works patience, some endurance. And endurance, come on, works experience. I have experienced some things. And experience works hope. And so I'm here to tell you this evening <laughs> that God is not going to leave you out, uh, amen, of a trip, uh, amen, that other people talked about and other people experience uh, and everybody else participates in. Uh, you don't have to sit around and listen to somebody else's story. You don't have to listen to everybody else talk about the goodness of God, uh, the faithfulness of God. Uh, you can experience it for yourself. Uh, and if you just have some faith, uh, God will take you through the process. 
uh, but you can't complain. Uh, you can't gripe. Uh, you can't get disappointed or disheartened uh, or dismayed uh, understanding that you're able to glory in tribulation also. Sound oh, man, I need you to help me out. Praise God. I'm telling you what, uh, the people of God ought to be a rejoicing people. Not just when you come to church and your favorite song is playing. Uh, not when the preacher's preaching just what you want to hear. Uh, amen. But when you are faced uh, with difficulties, uh, when your baby is sick uh, and you don't have any money in the bank account, uh, when your cabinet is bare, God is saying, I want to take you somewhere. One thing to talk about somebody else's testimony. It's one thing to share somebody else's experience. Uh, just like when you, somebody gives you a memento, uh, gives you a souvenir, and you look at that souvenir, and you are thankful, thank you very much, uh, but it's not the same. You see, when you put that uh, that magnet on your refrigerator of a place you've gone to and sometimes I would go in my refrigerator open my refrigerator and I would see my Copenhagen uh, and I remember all the beautiful sights at Copenhagen and, and I would see my little magnet that says Madrid and I say oh yes that was a nice place or Amelia's Island all my and I'm like yes oh I remember that and I didn't bring one I didn't bring one from uh, that place Sin City <laughs> I, I didn't bring any home of any Las Vegas. Uh, but I was with my wife, first of all. Let me say I was there. Ah, uh, you, you have a Las Vegas magnet? Oh, okay. So she had she saved it. Amen. It was a business trip. Amen. But if I would have sent that to you. All you would have is the magnet. You wouldn't have the experience. Oh, hallelujah. And God, he's so faithful. God is saying, you know what? You don't have to live off the highlights of somebody else walk with God. Oh. Can I talk to you a little bit about the highlights? Uh, oh, hallelujah. i tell you why some people don't have the highlights to experience. Uh, because they don't want to go through the valley low, amen, to get to the highlights. Oh, here we go. The book of Daniel. Chapter 3. Verse number 18. No, I'm sorry, 21. It says that these three men were bound in their coats. Sometimes the people of God get bound. Oh, I've, I'm never, I'm all, I always, always had liberty. No, 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 no. Oh, so y'all don't like that preaching. The fact of the matter, sometimes I'm bound with anger. I'm, sometimes, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm suppressed and oppressed. Even depressed. Hello? I, I told you about that vacation that we had. And when I got to that place, I was ready to turn around, come back home. Because of the spiritual encounter that I had. And so everything wasn't pleasant. But these men were bound in their coats. Their hosen, meaning their tunics. And they had their hats on. And, uh, and their other garment. And they were cast into the mist of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the uh, flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and I know you've heard the story of Abednego. Amen. And these three men 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego fell down. Sometimes we fall. Amen. Sometimes righteous, the righteous abound, and sometimes the righteous fall. But can I tell you that this was a journey that God was letting them go on. Amen. It was a trip. Amen. That, that wasn't a pleasant one. Sometimes God will send us uh, on an unpleasant trip uh, because that's our tribulation. But can I tell somebody it doesn't stop at tribulation when you're a child of God. Uh, God doesn't leave you in tribulation. Uh, tribulation is only part of the journey. Uh, tribulation is meant to bring you a Amen to a place of endurance uh, and endurance is meant to lead you into a place of experience and experience uh, is a place that leads you to hope. And so then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound? Amen. Into the midst of the fire, they answered and said unto the king, True. I took him and I bound him and I took him and I bound him. Men of God, people of God, and I took him and I bound him. Amen. I didn't waste anything and I threw them. Amen. In the fire and I turned the fire up sevenfold. Yes, we did as you commanded. Oh, it's true. Hey, can I tell you, oh, enemy, rejoice not against me when I fall. Amen. When I'm cast in the fire but the king answered and said lo I don't see three people right now I don't see three men bound right now I don't see three but I see four and the four is in the form of the son of God he wasn't seeing a, a manifestation of Jesus it was an angel of God can I tell you sometimes uh, that we entertain angels unawares? Uh, and I know that scripture. It means that when you see a, a person in human form, you may not realize that it's an angel. Uh, but sometimes, uh, hey, you don't understand uh, that when you are in your tribulation, uh, when God decides to take you on a trip and a journey so he can give you a, a, a souvenir to take home with you, uh, to say, I've experienced this uh, I've done this uh, I've been there uh, and I've overcome uh, can I tell you God uh, the sovereign God is trying to give some of you some souvenirs to keep as a memorial So they're bound, they're bound, they're bound. And amen, when you keep your faith, when you don't give up your faith, your most precious faith, your most holy faith, sometimes when you get in situations, you got to pray in the spirit. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. It may seem foolish, but the Bible says, when I pray in the spirit, I build myself up on my most holy faith. And when my faith begins to operate, uh, oh, I can rejoice uh, in the glory of God. Uh, when my faith is in operation, the peace of God settles on me. When my faith is in operation, the grace of God uh, moves around in my life. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, while you're on your journey and you experience the Son of Man or the Son of God or an angel begin to dance around with you. Hey, the angel begin to motivate you. Hey, the angel begin to stir you. And next thing you know, while the fire has you surrounded, God has you surrounded also. And the angel's putting out the fire that's on on you. Hey, the angel is making sure that God keeps you. Come on, somebody. Hey, you have God in your life. Yes, you may be put in the fire. Yes, the fire may be turned up seven times. But if you just keep your faith, if you just hold on to your faith, I tell you, God has sent an angel. You can't have a testimony without the test. 
Give me a little more. I'm killing myself. Where is he? Then, go back to the previous verse. Then, he said, I see. Oh, hallelujah. See, some of us, we don't see it. Somebody else see the hand of God. Uh, I don't know who you're serving. Uh, I don't know. There's something different about you. Uh, when somebody else goes through this who doesn't have God, hey, they begin to crumble. Uh, but there's something about you. Uh, you have some staying power. Uh, you have some patience, some endurance. Uh, and you're able to endure this fire. Somebody else wouldn't endure. Oh, Hallelujah. And the Bible says, he said, and I, I see four men loose. See, God doesn't want you bound in your fire. God wants you to be loose in your fire. See, you want to be loose once you get out of the fire, and God wants you to be loose. God wants you to have liberty while you're in your fire. He said, I see four men loose in the fire, and they have no hurt. Some of you been through the fire and you've been through the flood. Huh? But can I say, uh, you're still standing. Uh, you're still walking. Uh, you're still believing. Uh, you're still living for God. Uh, amen. You still have the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're still righteous. Uh, you still have peace. Uh, you still have joy. Uh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm still standing. I have the t-shirt to say I've been there. I have the bumper sticker to say I've done that. I have the magnet to say I've walked this road. Hallelujah. I see. You need to let the world see Jesus. Next verse, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and he began to speak and said, and the one that put them in there began to talk to them. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But you, you got to understand, huh? the one that put him there wasn't in control. Huh? The one that put him there wasn't the sovereign God. Huh? God. See, some of us uh, are wondering why the sovereign God uh, would put us in that situation. I think you're turning me up here, but you need to turn me up out there. Oh, I'm in the dead spot. I want to be in the dead spot. All right. Is this a dead spot? Am I in a dead spot? All right. So the Bible says that he came to the burning, the mouth of it, and said, hey, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants. Now you're going to have to turn that down now. That thing is blasting up there. Don't kill him. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego. He said, you servants of the most high God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, when you have, a, when God places you in a situation, amen, where you have a testimony, you have a testimony because now you're witness to him. And when you're witness to him, hey, others can see who you are. Amen. Others can see who you serve. Hey, hallelujah. And when others can't see him and they can't see the one you're serving, you really don't have a testimony. Some of us get all bent out of shape huh, when we're going through something. Huh, when life difficulties come our way, you don't understand that God is trying to put you in a situation that you can trust him all the more, huh, that he can be glorified, huh, that he can show how faithful and how powerful he really is. He wants to show that he's the supreme one, that he's the sovereign one.
He said Nebuchadnezzar came and he, he said, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, walking in the fire. Yeah, what do you want? Next verse, please. And the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the, the king's counselors be, being gathered together now, and everybody else coming around just to see who you are. And they saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Can I tell you something? It doesn't matter what the enemy brings your way. It has no power over you. Jesus said, you had no power over me unless it was given from above. If anything had any power over you, God gave it. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Oh, hallelujah. He said, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was their hair of their head singed. I wouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> Neither were their uh, coats changed, uh, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. They didn't even smell like where they came from. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel. See, that's why we know it's an angel. Sent his angel and delivered his servants that what? The only reason that they had a magnet, the only reason they had the bumper sticker, hey, the only reason, amen, they had the t-shirt was because they trusted him. You see, when God places you in a situation, amen, he's trying to give you a memorial. He's trying to give you a souvenir. Yes, he'll send the death angel, but the death angel could not touch wherever the blood was applied. Oh, hallelujah. And I and have changed the king. He said, God, they trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Now, I'm telling you what, God wants you to have a testimony. You know why she's running around? <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking... Because her apartment complex caught on fire recently. <laughs> And somebody came knocking. Hey, say, she's all inside and says, hey, don't you know your apartment is on fire? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Somebody need to get their faith back again. You go a few chapters later. Yeah, you can sit down, guys. My wife said, I'm not, I'm not letting y'all sit down. Y'all standing up on you tomorrow. Do those guys or everybody else? Those guys in the fire, they had to stand up the whole time. They needed the experience. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> she said, <laughs> in the book of Daniel, chapter number six, we see another situation. It's God placing the man of God with faith in a place, a souvenir shop. And he wasn't there just to look at the souvenir. He was there to get one. To get a memorial, to get something be, to be reminded, hey, God brought me through this thing. I'm a hallelujah. You see, some of you have been complaining about the stuff you've been through. Well, you're not supposed to be complaining about what you've been through. It's supposed to be a testimony. Oh, yes. Daniel chapter 6, verse number 18. See, the lion's den was a souvenir shop. The king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Now, and the, the, the king that threw him in the den 
It's fasting for him now. That shows you the king wasn't in control. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. He didn't want to even hear the music. And his sleep went from him. Next verse. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. Keep going, please. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Next verse. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. In other words, he wasn't holding, oh, hallelujah. In other words, he wasn't holding a grudge against the king. Oh, hallelujah. See, you can't get a memorial. When you hadn't forgiven. Because you can't have peace. Then said Daniel. Did, did, did I read the previous verse yet? I don't know. You just skipped real in the middle of me talking. But what, did I already read the previous verse? Okay, thank you. So when I finish reading the verse, you can. Okay. My God have sent his angel. Here we go again. Again, I believe some of you, you just don't realize, uh, amen, how many times God has spared you. Some of you say, well, I hadn't seen any angels. Well, do you have to see to believe? If half of you saw an angel, you wouldn't believe you'd end up in uh, a cardiac intensive care unit. Amen. You would blow up a gasket, a vessel, and everything else. Amen. Need a, a bag? <laughs> Let me just stop right there. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't be pretty. God knows that. And so God has sent his angel and have shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. So I'm in the den. See, the thing is, is if you want a testimony, if you want experience, see, some of the things that God wants us, desires us to experience, again, they aren't pleasant. I want faith. And he, I, want my, I want my faith to increase. Then God sends something along your way. Yeah, we don't want faith increased. So this lion's den was simply a place where the sovereign God can just give out some memorials, some souvenirs to say, hey, some T-shirts to say, hey, you say it. I've been there. Hey, can, can I tell you about when I've been through this situation? And, and, and he said, I, we also, he said, uh, Paul said, I boast. I boast. I glory. And it wasn't, you know, saying I'm having a part. In other words, I'm boasting in my tribulation. I'm telling you, amen, that God is in control. He's the sovereign one. And if he placed me in this situation, he's going to see me out of it. And this experience is going to work hope. Uh, and hope won't make me ashamed. It won't deceive. And the whole thing is God wants to give you hope. Uh, why does he want to give me? Uh, let me tell you something. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hopeful. It's the evidence of things not seen. And he goes on to say, and also before the king, have I done no hurt? Next verse. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to read all of it. I was intending to read it, verse 28. Keep going. Until I... Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was upon him, found upon him, because he what? It was, I just believe in you. He was able to believe that God was able to deliver him from the mouth of the lions. 
Now I can go on. If you have, if you can read all the way up to verse number twenty-eight and see the whole. Most of you know the the, uh, the account and the situation. And so what I'm here to tell you today simply is this. Amen. God is desiring to give us experience, uh, and, but we can't get this experience unless God sends us through some tribulation. Hey, what I call God's souvenir shop. See, we, we want it when we go to souvenir shop, it's these it's nice places. It's nice, a nice little place. But can I say, you got to pay for your souvenir. God knows exactly what he's doing. So experience entails an encounter. And it, it sometimes entails an enemy. And it, 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 it's an encounter or, or it entails needing to have endurance. And it's simply a test that God allows you to go through. Amen. So God can give you once again something to take home with you. And so when you are going through any place that God places you in, or sends you. And it's not always the good places. Why is it that we always think a testimony is about, oh, yes, I got a $1,000 a that came in the mail. I just happened to go out to the mail, and I got a $1,000 check. And I wasn't expecting. That's great. But that's not an experience. There was no tribulation. There was no need for endurance. It wasn't like you went out there, oh, let me endure here for a little while. No. You start thinking how you were going to spend it. Why are you thinking about paying your tithes first? <laughs> you know? And we don't understand sometimes that God is desiring to give us hope. But hope doesn't come without experience. Not biblical hope. Hope is very, I heard this statement, hope is very powerful. I just heard it yesterday, or the day before. Hope is very powerful. It is a powerful tool. And hope is the thing that God gives us, amen, as a memento says, you know what? I've experienced this. I, I've been to. Can you imagine everybody wanting to hear from Shadrach, Meshach? The Bible says that they were promoted in, the, in that kingdom. Simply because I, I know everybody just wanted to come talk to them. What in the what happened? Hey, I, I was just trusting God. Whether he was going to take me to be with him. They said it. They said, hey, king, he's going to deliver us from you either way. <laughs> no matter which way we're delivered, we're delivered. There are some souvenirs that God is desiring to give you. The question is, you know, like I said, you get souvenirs from some places you wanted to go, but some places people would dare to go. And God is a God of balance. He's going to take you to some places that you desire to go, but he's also going to take you to some places that no one would. That, who's, who's going to volunteer for a lion's den? A fire furnace. There's no volunteers. But, won't you stand, please? The sovereign God, who's in absolute control, he's free from any external control. He's able. I said he's able to give you hope. The Bible says, Christ in us the hope of glory. There's another scripture that tells us that we have this anchor, this hope as an anchor. 
of the soul. You know the scripture that says we are saved by hope. We're saved by hope. Hope is an anchor for our soul. And Christ in us is the hope of glory. But the only way I'm going to have biblical hope is to have some experience. Hope, experience, worketh. Hope. Anybody want some hope? They want Christ in them. They want to be, anybody want to be saved? Anybody want to anchor to the soul that you can't be lost? That's hope. But if I'm going to have that type of hope, sometimes there's a lion's den that's waiting for me. But we, I can look at the lion's den differently. Hey, that's just a souvenir shop. Let me pick up some mementos and say, I've been here. I've done that. He's the God of hope. Won't you lift your hands where you are? I pray that we're able to be like Paul. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. The next place God desires to take you, don't complain about it the whole trip. Are we there yet? Embrace the place that God has for you. Embrace the journey. Embrace the test. Because when you're done with the test, when he's done with the test, you'll have a testimony. And that testimony will say God is faithful. God is trustworthy. God is powerful. God is able. God is my salvation. God is my deliverer. God is my helper. God is my keeper. God is my friend. That's it. Won't you be determined? You know what? I'm not going to be a bull in a china shop. When I get into God's souvenir shop, I'm going to trust him. God, send your angel. God, let me dwell in your presence. Lord, that people can see you. That they can see your presence. They can see your a providence, your provision. Walking with me in the midst of the Father. That they can see your salvation, your preservation. In the dead of lions. That they can see, Lord, your hand. Your staying hand, your keeping hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because this memorial, this testimony, is simply this. You are the Lord God. So, Lord, I'm not going to be afraid of the plague that comes. But I'm going to apply the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to be bigger. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger. Lord, my faith will grow deeper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, talk to him right now. It's going to make me stronger. It's going to make me better. In the name of Jesus. Do everything, Lord, you purpose to do. That I, Lord, can experience you. As much as I experience tribulation, I will be able to experience you. Oh, Lord. In my greatest joy. With Give me, me the wisdom. The dark, Give me the revelation and understanding. The Everything, Lord, that you allow to come in my life is the sovereign God. God. The you want me to come out of it with experience. From beginning and with hope. The end, faith and trust. trust you. In and Jesus' name. Come on, somebody reach out after him. Work I 
I believe somebody needs to, need to, to repent. God, whatever somebody needs to confess and say, Lord, forgive me. I will trust you. I've looked at it wrongly. In your In the name of Jesus, Lord, whatever souvenirs you desire to give me, whatever memorials you desire to put in my life, to be a reminder, Lord, that you. I trust word. And in your never I want my keepsake. I want my memorial, my testimony. For good. God will Come on, somebody don't squander your testimony. Way, I will trust Come you. on in Jesus' name. Sovereign in the mountain. In Jesus' name. Sovereign. Let's just reach out after him right now. God, give me the faith to believe. The faith to walk boldly in the storm. In the midst of the fire. Sovereign Lord, to preserve me and abide in the lion's den. Sovereign to in my face whatever you would bring along my way. With me in the dark. In Jesus' name. With me at the dark. Come on, just for a few more moments. Sovereign just in the mountain air. Sovereign Come on, somebody build themselves the up on that most holy floor. faith. Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. With me in the name in of the Jesus, storm. I'm going to trust you, Lord. Sovereign in my greatest joy, sovereign Hallelujah. in my deepest cry, Shatarama, with me in the dark, with me I at the dark. I said sometimes your difficulty is God's souvenir shop. In your everlasting He's trying to give you something to take with all you. The pieces of my that life. you can be reminded of. That he was right there the with you walking in the midst I of the fire. I can trust you. That he kept you in the and lion's den. You're day. never failing love. Come on, in the name of you Jesus. You work everything for good. God, whatever Lord. comes my way, Jesus I will name. trust you. Come on, we're going to trust you, In Jesus. your everlasting arms, all the pieces of my life, I trust from you, beginning Jesus. to the end, I can trust you. And in your never failing love, you work everything for good. God, whatever comes my way, I will trust you. Come on, anybody trust him. In your everlasting arms, all you, the pieces of my life, Hallelujah. from beginning to the end, Maybe you're in a I difficult can place trust right now. you. Won't you say, Lord, I and trust you. And in your never-failing love, Maybe you're in a place where God is trying to give you a memorial. For good. God, and memento and experience. Come my way, God, I'm going to trust, trust you. you. Hallelujah. Sorry I'm going to trust you. On the ocean floor. Hallelujah. In the calm. God, forgive me for with complaining. Me in the storm. Forgive me for griping. Sovereign I'm going to trust you, Lord. Joy. Forgive me for being a bad witness. In my deepest cry, with me in the dark, with me at the dawn. Hallelujah. In your everlasting arms, all the pieces of my life, from beginning to the end, I can trust you. In your never failing love, you work Praise everything God. for good. God, whatever comes my way, I will trust you. In your everlasting love, some of you just rewind and tape. Go back to those places that you've experienced. That seem to be negative. And go back and get that memorial that's waiting for you to say, I've been there. I've overcome that. In Jesus' name. Amen. When we get the Lord a hand clap of praise, let's thank him. Let's begin to thank him all over the house. Jesus' name. You know, there's a, a saying, 
this. How you doing? I can't complain. Yes, you can. But we can choose not to. Let's be living, walking testimonies for God. Of his faithfulness, of his goodness, of his love, and his character. Amen. God bless you. Real good. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.